Jesse Rubino with the Wyoming Freedom Caucus. Thank you for joining us for Eye on the Issues. Obviously, the 2023 legislative session is now in the history books. Let's talk about from a 10,000 foot level, what's your perspective on how things went? You know, overall, I would say that the session was was an overall gain for conservatives and for liberty loving people. Um, there were there were some major legislative wins that we'll get into. There were some really big losses. Um, but overall, I would say those losses provide an opportunity for conservatives to move forward in our next election cycle and get more conservatives elected. We had a lot of bad votes on the record, and that's going to help us moving forward. Let's begin, of course, with the positive with your wins. Uh, let's talk about whichever one you want to go with first. Okay. Um, one of the biggest wins that that uh, I think was achieved this session and was spearheaded by the Wyoming Freedom Caucus um, was House Bill 70, Homeschool Freedom. So this was signed into law by the governor, and this allows for multifamily cooperative homeschooling in Wyoming. Um, crazy to think this wasn't something that was allowed prior to this being enacted, and so it's a huge win. Um, the second win has to do with healthcare visitation. Before we can, yeah. before we go further, let me let me let's backtrack and let's talk a little bit more about the homeschooling. So this was you said this was not allowed before. So let's let's talk about how a family in Wyoming's life is going to change because of this bill. Yeah. So thanks to this bill, um, families are allowed to be considered an accredited homeschool program. Um, if they decide to do a homeschool scenario beyond just the four walls of their home. So prior to this law, if you had a, a family with three children and you wanted to homeschool them, that's where legally you'd be you'd be stopped. Um, under, under this new law, families can work with the family down the road, family across the county, whatever, and have a cooperative homeschool setting that can hopefully bring us back to schooling in you know centuries past where, where we have um, small schoolhouses, um, larger groups together, not necessarily the size of a full classroom today, um, but just expanding opportunities for, for homeschool in Wyoming, which is huge. It is huge. And, and nationwide, as you probably know, homeschooling has jumped by leaps and bounds uh, since, of course, the pandemic. Once parents realized what was happening in the schools, they, they kind of wanted to pull the reins back, I think. Wouldn't you say that? Absolutely. Yes. Um, being able to see what your children are being taught over, you know, Zoom or, or Google uh, Google Meets, as, as most students were over the past few years, parents saw a lot of things that shocked them. And while it was very frustrating, I think, for young kids to, to learn virtually, it was a blessing in disguise because people were able to see exactly what was being taught. And more than ever, even today, there's been a lot more light shown on our schools, and um, that'll come up when we discuss some of our some of our losses from the session or, or some other school related issues. Okay, let's talk about pro life for a second. I know uh, two measures that that moved in the right direction. Yes, um, so we passed the, the Wyoming Freedom Caucus was instrumental in passing two historic pro life bills this session. Um, the first is the Life as a Human Right Act, House Bill 152, sponsored by Representative Rodriguez Williams from Cody. Um, this law, it was allowed to go into law by the governor. He did not sign it, but he did allow it to uh, take effect last week. Um, it protects life from the moment of conception. And science has proven time and time again, everyone agrees that conception is the only moment that makes sense to define when life begins. Um, so the Life as a Human Right Act protects life from that moment. And it clearly states that in Wyoming, health care does not include abortion. Um, unfortunately, this was uh, just enjoined uh, yesterday by a judge in Teton County, a Gordon-appointed judge in Teton County. Um, so uh, as, as far as the Life is a Human Right Act goes, we're kind of in limbo. Abortion is technically now legal again in the state of Wyoming. So prior to the measure going through and prior to it briefly going into effect, sounds like what was what were the, what was the abortion law in Wyoming so prior to it taking effect on Friday abortion was legal in Wyoming um, and this is due to the fact that last year's legislative efforts um, our trigger ban that is also temporarily enjoined and it's not in effect due to the same activist judge um, up in Teton County so was that abortion legal up until birth in Wyoming um, I believe we had a 15 week ban. 15 weeks. Gotcha. Okay, good. And the other pro-life bill? Uh, the second pro-life bill is the first in the nation. We're the first state to ban chemical abortions. And this is extremely important. Um, we know that chemical abortions make up 
more than 50% of all abortions in the United States and probably a greater number in Wyoming. Um, and we don't know for sure even how many abortions that, that chemical abortions make up because there's no national reporting requirement. Um, but we know that this practice is barbaric. It hurts women. And it's, it's insulting to think that a woman can get ahead in life only if she has access to these chemicals that hurt her, hurt the baby, hurt the environment. And so this one, um, it, it'll take effect July 1st. And it's historic. Pro-life organizations around the country are celebrating with, with pro-life Wyomingites. And has anybody made noise and said, hey, we're going to try to challenge this? I imagine that that one will be challenged as soon as it takes effect. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that we heard during the session from some pro-abortion legislators was that, you know, these laws aren't well written. These laws are going to be challenged in court. And I would posit that no matter how perfect a pro-life law is, it's going to be challenged by pro-abortion advocates because they're 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 not going to be satisfied by a well-written law, which I believe these are. They're they're going to sue no matter what under any circumstances to continue to kill babies. And that's unfortunate, but it's a reality that we have to face. And I believe that we can we can win over time in Wyoming. Okay. In respect to uh, visitation rights for healthcare facilities, tell me about that. So two bills um, were passed by the legislature and signed by Governor Gordon. The first was House Bill 127 and the second was Senate File 80. Um, so House Bill 127 um, allows clergy into all healthcare facilities um, as visitors in Wyoming. Um, this is really important during the COVID lockdowns as, as we're all aware. Thousands of people were, were made to die in this country without having access to their religious leaders and their religious community, and that's wrong. Um, so House Bill 127, that was sponsored by Representative Angelos from Campbell County. And then Senate File 80 um, just expands healthcare visitation to family and basically states that in Wyoming, the policy of the state is that family members cannot be barred from accessing their family members while they're sick in a hospital setting. Yeah, the way things played out during COVID, especially those people that had loved ones get either get sick or, or even worse, pass away. And I know there were some people couldn't even go see their loved one, you know, even shortly after they passed away. They were they were in morgues for weeks before they got buried. It was horrific. Yeah. And, and people couldn't even husbands couldn't be there for the birth of their children in, in many hospitals in Wyoming. And so this will protect that. Good. Good to hear. OK. Any other wins you want to talk about before we go to the losses? Um, another big win, I would say, that, that has been a priority of Wyoming conservatives for many years is the ban on crossover voting, House Bill 103. That's another bill that the governor refused to sign, um, but was sponsored by the vice chairman of the Wyoming Freedom Caucus, Representative Haroldson from Wheatland. And uh, this was a huge win. As I said, Wyoming conservatives have been pushing to end crossover voting for many, many years. And um, this, this law will prevent voters from switching parties for 96 days leading up to the primary election. So the stuff that we saw last summer with the Cheney campaign encouraging Democrats to switch on the day of the election, that won't be a thing anymore in Wyoming. So game playing will go away, if you will. Yes, hopefully so. Yes. OK, so let's talk about the losses. OK, um, so I guess I'd, I'd like to start out with um, education. I think education is the most important issue right now for, for most people. Um, and we had a very strong universal school choice bill. Um, there were mirror bills. There was one on the Senate side and there was one on the House side. The Senate bill made it through the Senate, passed with flying colors. It had like 33 sponsors in the House, which is over half the chamber. And um, the Speaker of the House decided to hold that bill in his desk drawer. Um, what the bill would do is it's, a, it's an education savings account program. It would provide Wyoming families with up to $6,000 per student that they could put toward private school tuition, homeschool curriculum, private tutor costs, whatever it may be, so that a, a family can have better and equal access to school choice in Wyoming. Um, the unfortunate thing is that several red states, states that aren't as red as Wyoming, have enacted similar pieces of legislation in the past several years. Um, Arizona has had a universal school choice program for many years, and it has proven to benefit all students. Um, our Speaker of the House decided to keep that bill in his drawer. He said that it violated local control, and so um, it, it died in the drawer. Oh, that's very, very disappointing. Okay, any another loss? 
Um, so let's see, um, parental rights and education, another education related bill, Senate file 117. Um, a lot of these losses, they're, they're common sense pieces of legislation that don't make any sense for them to have died in a state like Wyoming. Um, and this is a really good example of that. Parental rights and education would have prevented teaching kindergarten through third graders about sexuality and gender identity in public schools. That one was also kept in the desk drawer by the Speaker of the House. Um, and with both of the bills I just discussed, the Wyoming Freedom Caucus brought motions to bring those bills out of the Speaker's drawer and were defeated both times they tried to do this. And there are motions, there are rules where um, any member can, can move to suspend the rules and, and bring a bill out and refer it so that it can be debated. And both both times those those motions failed on a vote of 26 to 36, which is very interesting because the Wyoming House of Representatives only has five Democrats. Oh, so well, I got to ask you, what, what's going on with the speaker? What's what's he thinking with keeping all these bills in his desk? Um, so the reasoning he, he provided um, an op ed to Cowboy State Daily describing his reasons for keeping these bills in his desk drawer. And um, on both of those, he he posited that they violated local control. Um, the Wyoming Freedom Caucus would respond, you know, there's no more local control than parents. Um, and so, you know, the argument that local control should control here, it doesn't really make much sense. Um, but aside from that, there are there are issues of local control that that conservatives believe should be local. We're talking about things like city ordinances and 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 other matters that you would find in a city ordinance code, but Cheyenne, Wyoming doesn't have a different water quality standard from Lusk. That's a matter of state policy. And, and these things should be matters of state policy as well. And so the speaker, he's a new speaker, I gather, eh? Yes. Yep. First, this is his first um, session as speaker. And so given how he operated and what he did and what he did with some of these bills, what's it going to take to get him out of there next, next go around? So in Wyoming, um, interestingly enough, there's there's somewhat of a tradition uh, where a representative will serve speaker as you know one term as speaker and then step down. Um, so that's been the trend in almost all of recent history in Wyoming um, up until uh, Speaker Harshman. He served two terms as speaker and kind of broke that trend. But up until him and after him, most speakers serve one term. So. Um, we're hoping that with with more conservatives, if we can elect more conservatives and more liberty minded people in 2024, we'll be able to elect a truly conservative speaker. Um, during this session, another a couple of losses that could be discussed. There were two bills aimed at banning ESG investing in Wyoming. And for your viewers that aren't aware, ESG is environmental social governance scoring. And um, basically, it's just woke ideology uh, woven into the um, finance industry and what a lot of environmental activists are trying to do. They're trying to get large companies to divest from our legacy industries in Wyoming. So there are two pieces of legislation aimed at curbing that in the state of Wyoming. And both of those bills ended up being sent to the House Appropriations Committee. Uh, the House Appropriations Committee, all of the committees are entirely appointed by the Speaker of the House. The House Appropriations Committee during this session became somewhat of a kill committee. Um, and so on both of these pieces of legislation regarding ESG, when they were before the committee, they were um, amended down to nothing. There was basically nothing left in these bills. They spent hours on each one. They had testimony from experts all over the country, all over the state. And then at the very last second, the uh, leaders of these committees brought out what they call a substitute bill, which just replaced the entire bill, every single line with with effectively language that did nothing. Um, and this happened with both ESG bills. It also happened with the Second Amendment bill. It also happened with a bill um, regarding pharmacy benefit managers. It became kind of a common practice of, of this legislative session to reveal substitute bills at the 11th hour to change the intent of the entire piece of legislation, but not removing the sponsors who worked so hard on those bills. Yeah, it sounds disappointing. Let's talk about uh, any issues you're going to be monitoring post-session. Yeah, so we just entered into the interim. Um, right now, as we speak, the Management Council is meeting to discuss interim committee topics. Um, and so there's going to be a range of topics brought up during the interim that the Wyoming Freedom Caucus will be monitoring. Um, I just mentioned ESG. ESG legislation is going to be a priority for the Joint Appropriations Committee during the interim. 
So that will be something to pay close attention to. Um, education is also going to be focusing on student mental health. This is something that I believe conservatives and you know advocates of parental rights should pay close attention to. Um, we know that there's an epidemic of young children being coerced into sexual ideology, and a lot of that is coming at the behest of the American Psychiatric Association. So anytime we see anything about mental health with young children, our red flags go up, and, and, and we're very concerned about that. Okay. If you had to grade this session compared to the last couple where would you grade it? A being the best, F being failure? Um, I guess I'd like to take a more optimistic approach. I, I would give it a B. And and my only reason is that there were a lot of disappointing losses. Um, but those losses, thanks to the Wyoming Freedom Caucus, they were all roll call votes. Mm -hmm. And so the people of Wyoming are going to be able to hold their representatives and senators accountable. And they did in 2022. We saw a lot of huge wins, a lot of gains in the legislature. And I think we will in 2024, too. Okay. And Jesse, I've got to ask you, what do you like most about living in Wyoming? Ooh, I love living in Wyoming. I spent, um, I, I've lived here since I was born. And I spent three months in Washington, D.C. Um, as an intern for Senator Barrasso a few years ago. And, you know, I think my favorite thing about living in Wyoming is the people. Um, everyone here is genuinely kind. And I think even while we have these policy disagreements, vehement policy disagreements, I think everyone here genuinely wants what's best for everyone else. And um, I just think the conservatives are right about how to do it. Gotcha. Great. Jesse, thank you for joining us for Eye on the Issues. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much.